Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chop It Up. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by my friend Michelle and my friend JR. And as it comes to pass, my two friends share very different, I would even say opposing political views. Um, and in light of the recent election coming up, I would like to ask Rebus a question about the coronavirus. Rebus, obviously you support the Republican side, correct? Yes. And you believe if Joe Biden is elected, we will be facing another shutdown, correct? Yes. And you believe that the current wave of corona uh, positive test cases and the commiserate death rate is a vast improvement over it was, even though your leader, Trump, says that the only reason we're having more positive tests is because they're testing more. So that has no bearing on the overall health of the United States. If we weren't testing them and we were ignorant of the numbers, then they would be better. So it's, it's better to not know who's sick than it is to know who's sick. And we won't even get into that because that's like chaos mathematics. So what I will say is this. Given the number or the percentage of death, the death rate now, would you think this was an acceptable rate if it was your family members that were sick and a certain percentage of them had to die? Because uh, I, I think it's it acceptable to, in, a, in a... Well, I liken it to someone who has a political agenda like pushing the LGBTQ agenda over everything or pushing the, the Latin culture over everything or the white culture over everything. And then when they have to have brain surgery, they don't care what the surgeon looks like. They just want to make sure they get the best one. So is this what this is here? When people talk about, well, it's an acceptable rate for people to die. Does that mean it's acceptable as long as it's somebody else's people? Well, here, I'll answer that real simple. Is there a simple the answer for that? Yes. Just take the flu season. The flu season, the numbers are better with the corona than the flu. So they are acceptable numbers. More people are going to die of the average flu than the coronavirus. Because they don't get a vaccine. Well, yeah, but I, won't, I won't say that it's the average flu. However, the flu numbers that they quote are not an average number. The flu numbers that they quote are a very, very extreme number. But you've answered my question. Thank you very much. Yes. Moving right along, I would like to address a very significant opinion that we have run across here at Chop It Up and I have run across myself. Um, as everyone knows, I, and in political terms, I campaign for people who are locked up. Not everybody, but the people I know who are locked up, I campaign for unashamedly, unabashedly so. I support my friends. I support my people in prison. And the backlash that I hear is because I'm always, you know, standing up for guys with life sentences. And most guys with life sentences have violent crimes. You know, it just stands to reason. The more severe the crime, the more severe the punishment. However, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine, his name is James Fulton. And here is James Fulton's picture. And James Fulton is a guy who is currently serving a life sentence for a victimless crime. Even better, a victimless series of crimes. I would like to read to you James Fulton's record of incarceration. In 19... 86, well, in 1985, James Fulton was given two years for possession or sale of heroin. Also in 1985, the same day, he was sentenced to five years and six months for possession of cocaine. Really, really dangerous stuff. That's why he got five years for it, because it's just that dangerous. And I say that mockingly, because it's very, very petty. And then in 1987, 
he was sentenced again to five years for possession of cocaine. Because as we say, possession of cocaine is really not that much. It's not a big deal. Well, then in 1990, well, 91, he was sentenced to life, natural life. He was sentenced to natural life in prison for guess what? Okay. That's right. Huh? Okay. Cocaine. That's exactly right. He was sentenced for trafficking in cocaine or conspiracy to commit trafficking in cocaine. And in this instance, well, I'll get to that. Now, they I'm are is gone again. Huh? That's right. They are. There, oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, now now let me let me hear it from the history of my buddy Pep. That's his nickname, Pep, James Fulton. In 1985, he sold to an undercover. He sold to him four times, one rock each time. So that means that this activity was so dangerous that the police let him go and called him back later on to buy another rock. Can I just interrupt? Sure. I don't know your friend, but he doesn't seem too bright to keep doing the same damn thing over and over no. again. Not so, that that deserves a life sentence, but still. Okay. I'm not saying that that Pep was making the best decisions in the world. No, that was, this. I don't know him, but he just I'm doesn't seem too bright. Times. So he sold him one rock, and then they came back later. Another rock, another a separate occasion, another rock, a separate occasion, another rock. Well, God damn it, if selling that rock was so dangerous, they could have locked him up after the first one, and they didn't. Mm -mm. And then in 1987, he had 10 rocks on him when he went to jail. So he got charged with that, 10 rocks. And He's a really bad drug in, dealer. Man, a rock is like that. He is a bad drug dealer. Yes, yes. And then in 1990, the police were selling the drugs to him in a sting. <laughs> and he didn't have any money. And his co-defendant tried to rob the police for the drugs. <laughs> so Pep ends up getting trafficking or conspiracy and gets a life sentence. So for <laughs> all the people out there who say, what about the victim? What about the victim? Well, there is no victim in Pep's case, and he still has a life sentence. They want Pep, they being the system, the system, the judicial system in the state of Florida has seen fit to make Pep die in prison for a handful of rocks. And let me say something else, right? Let me say something else. If these drugs are so goddamn dangerous, why don't they have a buyback program? Because guns are dangerous, and they have a buyback program for guns. So if they really want to get, I mean, think about it. If they were buying an ounce of cocaine from Pep every month to get it off the street, by now they could have got about 15 kilos off the street. They could have saved a bunch that. of people. That would be awesome. You know, but you know what? You bring your, you bring your crack to the police station. Yeah. Sir, yeah. I would like to trade this in. Pep, yeah, I mean, look, it's been a long night. I can't sell it. So let me turn it in for some money, you know, food stamps or something. Anyway. <laughs> Get money on his EBT card. <laughs> the only person Pep was a danger to was himself. <laughs> Pretty much. He's so, you know? Who is it? What's wrong with your friend? Man, and he ain't hurt nobody in prison. Pep is not a danger to society. He has hurt absolutely nobody in his life. Never had a violent crime. And here's the fucked up part about it. It's not like they gave him five years the first time. And the second time they said, hey, man, all right, 10 years, some kind of escalation. It was five and it was five. And I mean, think about it. Back in those days, you know how many, you know how much time you did off of five years back in the days? About a year. Two months. About a year, 13, <laughs> 14 months. So, I mean, you would almost say to yourself, man, 14 months, if I get popped, that ain't bad. If I get away for a month, I can put a little money in the bank, you know, and then it turns into five years again. And still they're handing out game time like it's going crazy. And then in 1990, when he's thinking, well, if I get knocked off maybe another five years, well, now it's a game changer. Now it's natural life. So yes, I will convict my friend Pep of being dumb as a guy. I won't say dumb as a rock because they might confuse that as cocaine. But he's dumb. <laughs> he's dumb as hell. But he does not deserve to die in prison. He's been in prison since 1990. <clears throat> Been in prison for 30 goddamn years for a handful of drugs. 
for a handful of drugs. You know what I'm saying? How is he a danger? How do you justify killing a man over some cocaine? You're killing him. And look, I understand this is not as graphic as a knee in someone's neck. This is not as graphic as suffocating someone on television. What this is, though, is a slow death, and it's systemic. And Pep deserves more than to die in prison for some damn cocaine. Now, for all you guys out there on the keyboard that like to talk about the victim and the victim and the victim, look, I know that when somebody gets killed, believe me, I know more than any one of you sons of bitches that there's a finality to it. Because I see my friend Kim every goddamn day. And if I could, I'd bring her brother back. And more for than just her, I mean, for him too. He didn't deserve to die. Shit just was a little bit beyond my control at that time. And that's not a cop out. That's the goddamn truth. But Pep killed absolutely nobody. Nobody. So for all you guys out there to jump on the keyboard, give me some criticism about Pep. Say, well, maybe he should only have two rocks. Maybe if he only had three rocks, four rocks is just way too much. Give me that. Because Pep deserves to be free. Free fucking James Fulton. Change the drug minimum mandatories. Can I give the alternative what they say about it? Not that I believe it or okay. that it should. It's that, well, you know, that it leads, the drugs lead to the violence and all well, this well, other stuff. How come Pep wasn't convicted of a violent crime? But the thing is, is if we're going to go down that road, you know what leads to violence? The Where they criminalize the drugs. Sure. You got anything to say about that, JR? Yes, I do. Damn, uh, but, why'd but, you say that? Yes. <laughs> but here's here's the main thing. I truly believe that because think about it. How many people have we seen in the system that actually went out and intentionally killed people and didn't get a life sentence? And they admitted to killing someone. I know and, a lot of them. Okay, listen. DUI manslaughter. DUI manslaughter has drugs. Alcohol is a drug. DUI manslaughter has drugs and has a death. And they won't get as much time as Pep got. And no. there's a victim. Hey, everybody. Newsflash. DUI manslaughter has a death involved. Pep yep. killed absolutely nobody. And you have people that literally, they went and they killed somebody. We, there's one. He had about a 40-year sentence for shooting somebody and killing him. He got 40 years. I know somebody else, he shot and killed somebody. He got 30 years. Intentional. But they got to plead it down to second degree. All right. Well, you know, we don't want to lose all these rocket scientists we have for uh, listeners and, and viewership. We don't want to lose them by making this too long. You know, we, we, we got to cut this video short so they pay attention. You know what I'm saying? We got to encapsulate the attention. Give them little. We can't give them sea bone so steaks. We got to give them baby bites. Look, <laughs> I'm. I don't watch. Wait, that's a lie. If it's about true crime and missing people, I watch very long videos. Well, you are more than <laughs> our typical viewer. No, you're correct. Yeah, Rebus, how long a video do you like watching? It depends on what I'm watching, but if it's not, it is. that's why we got to cut this some bitch off right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you like what we talked about, and if you didn't like it, I mean, I really don't care because I think Pep should be free. So, uh, free Pep, free James Fulton, and uh, press like, subscribe, and share, and we'll holler at you. <laughs>